everyone. I'm Shayla Murray, Executive Vice President for Public Affairs at Columbia. Welcome to Harlem Week, brought to you by the incomparable Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce. This past year and a half was one of the most challenging periods in Columbia's history, but we are ready to turn the page. Our 33,000 students are returning to campus in the fall, and in January, the new Columbia Business School will officially open its doors, bringing our Manhattanville campus to life with students, faculty, and visitors from around the world. So I'm here on the large square between the two buildings of Columbia Business School, and I'm here with the Dean of Columbia Business School, Costis McGlaris. So Costis, welcome. Tell us a little bit about this space and what makes it unique to Columbia. So what makes it unique to Columbia and to us, this, this space in between our two new buildings, is in fact that this is a public space. This is, uh, this is a space that belongs to the city of New York. This is part of the community. It's a park, it's a small park for the city of New York, where our community, our students, our staff, our faculty, will all be sort of interacting together. You know, this is our amazing new home. Right? The energy, the history, the level of nuance and texture that exists one block away from here is just incredible. So for our students, this is perfect to be embedded in the community, embedded in life, right? That doesn't stop the minute you enter the gates of a campus. You know, you never want to hide behind the walls of your office or the walls of the campus inside a building. I mean, you want to be able to engage, learn what are the sort of challenges, the opportunities around you, and just sort of immerse yourself into them. So in some sense, I cannot see how a better design uh, could have emerged than the type of campus that we are actually building here for Colombia, to be able to sort of be fully connected with our local community. Columbia is on track to invest approximately $6.3 billion in construction at Manhattanville. When the campus is fully built out and occupied, the university and affiliated entities will directly employ an estimated 6,400 people and pay salaries and wages totaling $600 million. In 12 years of active construction at Manhattanville, Columbia has exceeded its ambitious goals for participation by minority, women, and locally owned businesses. Columbia is tapping into the local workforce for its latest construction project at 125th Street and Broadway, a new university residential building intended for graduate students and faculty members. As these new buildings open their doors, the Manhattanville campus is becoming a beacon for what President Bollinger calls the fourth purpose of a university, to bridge knowledge with action. Columbia has a strong record of converting research into real world solutions. We are a leader among U.S. universities in translating new knowledge into products and services, into new businesses and new jobs. Columbia Technology Ventures, which works with the university's research labs, has helped to launch well over 250 startups based on Columbia's intellectual property. And we think Upper Manhattan is an increasingly important part of that story. I think it's easy to forget when you're sitting on any one of these campuses that you're actually part of a whole research corridor here. We like to think of it as something that follows sort of the spine of the one train heading north. But you've got each of the Columbia campuses, but then interwoven around them, you've got City College, you've got the Advanced Science Research Center, you've got the New York Structural Biology Center, and increasingly, you've got uh, startup incubators that are popping up to catch the companies that are emerging. So you've got these amazing buildings in the factory district, the Mink, Malt, and Tasty buildings, that already house startups, including some of Columbia's own startups, and are creating jobs here locally. The Columbia Harlem Small Business Development Center, located at the business school and operated in partnership with the Federal Small Business Administration, is a crown jewel of Columbia's community partnership portfolio. Since 2009, the center has worked with over 3,200 area businesses under the leadership of Karen Simmons. Many of the businesses that are in Upper Manhattan, if, if you go into any of those storefront businesses, uh, we have worked with them in some way, some capacity, whether it's helping them start, helping them grow, helping them with a marketing plan, helping them get financing. 
Um, but we also work with a lot of home-based businesses and a lot of people that are consultants and that are what we call solopreneurs, meaning that they are self-employed individuals that are really trying to grow whatever their side hustle is into a full-time hustle. When COVID hit, the center helped scores of local businesses to apply for federal support. With backing from the university, it launched a micro-loan program to provide additional relief in our immediate neighborhood. The center is now helping local businesses to emerge stronger from the pandemic through its step-by-step -step recovery guide, executive education and consulting services, and initiatives like the Harlem Local Vendor Program with its special focus on food and retail. One of the things that we really saw, which we were very surprised about during the pandemic, was the amazing outpouring of love that this community had for its small businesses. When we traveled around the city, around the state, businesses were closing down left and right. You know, you saw um, signs for storefronts for rent in Midtown and, and along the main commercial corridors. And we didn't see the same thing here. Um, we saw our communities coming out and supporting their small businesses and doing whatever they could in order to help them. The Wellness Center, located in the Jerome L. Green Science Center, has been training community members to be health advocates and providing services like free cholesterol and blood pressure screenings for years now. But COVID has transformed it. As part of Columbia's pandemic response, the center has organized vaccine pop-ups, enrolled hundreds of local residents in health plans, and provided food relief to local senior centers. We've been working in Harlem now for over 20 years on the ground with a number of churches, and we wanted to use our, ex our existing networks uh, to really build a foundation for partnerships to thrive. By creating a community health worker training center um, within which folks from the health ministries could come and be trained for absolutely economic empowerment is a healthcare uh, issue. Um, and healthcare is an economic issue. And the COVID pandemic has shown how intricately linked, um, you know, health and the economy is. If there's a healthcare crisis, there will be an economic crisis. And if there's an economic crisis, there will be a healthcare crisis. Thanks for spending time with us today. We are grateful to everyone at the chamber, to our local elected officials, and to community and business leaders for your partnership and support throughout this extraordinary period. We hope to see you in person back on campus next year.